Hi, I'm Bob Tunnell. I'm the driver of the 198 H&R Springs Hoosier Bimmer House BMW M3 and E Street Prepared out here at the SCCA Tire Rack Solo Nationals in Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm here today to talk about how to learn an autocross course. It's important because you don't get practice laps, you only get to practice walk. And familiarity with the course will give you confidence and confidence gives you speed. So before we go out, it's always good to have your goals. For a novice driver, very inexperienced, your goal, believe it or not, is just to not get lost. Intermediate driver, now you want to start focusing on the line. Find the shortest line and pay attention to what your car specializes in. If you've got a big high horsepower car, you're looking for the straightaways, opportunities to accelerate. If you've got a small, light, underpowered car, you're looking for ways to carry momentum around the corners. Uh, acceleration is not your game. You need to be, you need to carry momentum everywhere you can. And for the advanced driver, take all of that intellectual knowledge, all of the technique, and internalize it. Make it visceral. You want to know what your car is going to feel like when you're out there. Because if you can imagine that, that'll give you confidence. And again, confidence gives you speed. Check out the course map. They're always provided at national events. Either one you can put in your pocket and carry with you, or they're available online too get a good idea of the big picture so you can break the course down into small elements, easier to remember. Okay, let's go for a walk. First thing is the starting area. Knowing where to line up and what the best angle is to get your start can gain or lose time. The starting lights are over there, but they're gonna start you here. So determine your line, the best line to get to the lights. Time to go. One thing to look for are offsets or lane change type maneuvers where you want to shorten the line as much as possible while still rounding out the corner. And oftentimes you need to late apex certain corners leading to the others. For example, the next corner down is leading to a very fast section. So you want to late apex the corner before it to get a good run at it all the way down to the corner. So here we're heading into a, a fairly traditional 90 degree turn and after you've run these a few times, you'll know how you want to approach this. But the big difference here is this leads to an opening turn, a big increasing radius turn, one of the fastest turns on the course. So you really have to get this right and let the car run to the outside all the way down there. So at this point, we're approaching the slowest corner on the course where you can lose a lot of time. You're not going to make up much. If you've got a high horsepower car, make sure and get the car rotated so you can accelerate out of it. If you've got a low horsepower car, you want to carry as much speed as you can, but keep the tight, tightest line possible. Shortest distance is the quickest time. And every once in a while while you're walking, I think it helps to turn around and see the path that you've been walking. Chances are good you've been a little overly optimistic about just how sharp your car can turn. Like right here, this is where I'd like to be. I'm not gonna be here. My momentum is probably gonna carry me out here. So at that point, I'm gonna readjust my path, turn around, keep walking, so that this looks familiar to me when I'm actually out here. Because as we know, familiarity builds confidence and that builds speed. So now we're coming up to a, a section where there are two late apex corners after another because it leads to a very fast section. So it's really important to set up early. Late apex is kind of an odd term. You want to set up, make your turn early, turn on the back side of the cones, and then continue your arc around because you've got another late apex coming up because it leads to the fast, one of the fastest sections on the course. Late apexing is key. So this section is, a, is another fairly traditional 90 degree corner, which after you've run a few events, you'll know how you want to take it. But this one leads to another sweeper that ends in a decreasing radius at the end. So you've got to really watch yourself as you're gaining speed toward the end, know that you're going to have to manage your speed, bring it down, and button hook the turn back in at the end. Another feature of almost every autocross course is a slalom. Here we've got three cone slalom followed by another three cones. But you take it as if this were one long slalom, just late apex every cone as you go through alternating sides. It's particularly important to pace off the distance between the cones, not only to determine how far apart they are, are they 60 feet, 90 feet, you can drive the, the bigger spaces much faster, but also to see if they're consistent, because occasionally a course designer will trick you. They'll put a few at one distance, and then all of a sudden put one cone a little bit shorter, and if you're not ready for it, it's gonna catch you out, you're gonna hit a cone, two second penalty, your run is done. One last thing to watch for is the angle of the finish lights. 
at national events, they're typically straight across, but not always. Sometimes they are, they're at an angle and finishing on one side or the other might shorten your course by a, a couple tenths of a second. So look at the lights to see where to finish. Otherwise, just go straight through and then be sure at least once, walk through the stop box. I've seen more than one driver disqualified after a great run because they didn't follow the right path. And if you don't follow the path with all the cones, you're gonna lose that run. So when you're all done, you think you've got the course down, pull yourself off the course and try to drive it in your mind. Imagine what the car is gonna do, imagine what it's gonna feel like. You'll see people standing off the end of the finish line with their eyes closed and making movements, they're driving with the steering wheel. If you can drive the entire course in your mind and know what the car is gonna do and what it's gonna feel like, you're all set. Something else to remember, if you're a novice or intermediate driver who's way off the pace and you may feel like you're just not getting there and you've plateaued, Take heart, because there are so many decisions that your brain has to process while you're out here. In every corner, there's at least 10, 12, 15 different things that your brain has to do. It has to decide when do you go to the throttle? How hard do you go to the throttle? When do you come out of the throttle? When do you turn in? How sharply do you turn in? When do you start to unwind the wheel? Go into the brakes. When do you go to the brakes? How hard do you go to the brakes? Do you have to adjust your braking in the middle of the corner and while you're turning? And it's processing everything at the same time. If, in every corner, there are 10, 12, 15 things you've got to think about that your brain will process. On this course, there's 26 corners. So even 10 times times 26 is 260 decision points that your brain has to make. On that course, there's 48 of them. So that's 480 decision points. If you're only a hundredth of a second off on each one of those, that's five seconds. So take heart, if you're off the pace, it may be as little as an improvement of a hundredth of a second in every corner, the decisions that you have to make that get you back up to pace. So don't get discouraged, hang in there, you'll get there. <laughs>